you are known for having a very strong personality. You are very funny, uh, but you sometimes you can also get very cranky. What really gets you cranky in a boating scene? Um, my, my political skills are nowhere as good as yours, and if we uh, hadn't been working together so long, uh, you know, we wouldn't have achieved as, as much as, as we have. Um, I think occasionally it also works to get annoyed with people and give them a bit of a rocket, but then I need someone like you on the other side to then um, calm everybody down and, and uh, you know, fix, fix the problem. Um, but, but I'm a bit... Uh, I come from Yorkshire in England, which means I'm automatically big-headed. That wasn't my fault. I was born there and I couldn't do anything about it. Um, as I get older, I'm, I'm trying to calm, calm down and with your help. Um, but it still will always drive me crazy if we don't fix things that, that are very fixable. Tell us, what do you do? What's Iconovista all about? Well, I Iconovista um, uh, and Northrop and Johnson have a very important relationship. I mean, I, we, we started Iconovista where the, the most important part of the business was yacht brokerage. But because that business was focused on very high-end clients, those clients want other things. They want jets, jet charter, uh, they like uh, property, they like high-end vacations. And when you develop trust with a client over a period of years, you can assist them with these things. So right now, in fact, I'm starting a relationship with a jet charter business in Singapore. Um, and a very good example is a yacht that we sold recently. The, the client was based in another country. The yacht was initially in Singapore, and he was flying in by jet uh, every two days to see his new toy and his new boat. Um, so that's something that, that Icona Vista can do. Um, I also believe you've got to be very focused. We've invested in the franchise and the license for Northrop and Johnson uh, across Asia, myself and my partner Bart Kimmen, and, and that will be the premier business and we're focused on yachts and big charter. But of course, with the high-end clients, if they want the additional services, we also have that um, uh, in the background with Icona Vista. Anything worth mentioning, any big screw-up or anything funny that we should we shouldn't know about? Absolutely. Uh, I crashed two boats in 2010. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it shows that you've got to con constantly learn and, and, and be vigilant. No, no big, big problems, in fact. But um, I sold a gentleman a 30-foot powerboat, and I left. The, I delivered the boat and tied it up the previous evening to the dock. And the next morning, I was giving the gentleman his training on, on how to drive the boat in the marina. And um, so I said the first important thing, we prepare the boat, get the engines going, and then we release the lines. And as I moved forward, the boat just swung round straight into the dock. Why? Because someone in the marina had attached another midship's line on the other side. I hadn't done it, I didn't check it properly. Fortunately, no real damage apart from a scratch, but a very frightened owner. But we did get through the day uh, and the training. Also very funny, um, late last year we sold um, a 43-foot sail sailing boat. And again, I was teaching the owner. We'd been out for a day and had a beautiful sail, family on board. Came back into the marina, and this yacht has a giant bimini, which is a sunshade, which means it's more difficult to, to see the mast. And as I came into the marina, I said to the guy, we're gonna swing around and show you basically how to do a very quick U-turn and stop dead on the dock. As I turned the boat, we slid round, and then the boat just stopped, and then went sideways and sideways and sideways. A long 115 marina heading straight for a big yacht at the other end that we were going to crash into. And I thought, what am I doing wrong? I've completely forgotten how to drive a boat. This is ridiculous. Nothing I did made the boat go where I want it to go. And I thought, okay, what are we missing? This big bimini I mentioned. I had to lean my head three feet out and around. I forgot to drop the mainsail. So I was committing the cardinal seeing uh, bringing a sailing boat into, marina, into a marina with the mainsail still up. So we quickly dropped that, then the boat went exactly where we wanted it to and said to the owner, that's exactly how you don't do it. <laughs> that was pretty interesting, but a um, beginner's mistake, correct? That's yeah, it's, it's a total beginner's mistake and um, you know sometimes it is good to show owners that uh, you make mistakes and of course everybody does. And uh, critical things in Marina, do everything slowly, even if you make the mistake, you're not going to cause any big damage. Can you tell us about Singapore as a, um, as a boating scene, as a place to keep a boat or to buy a boat? Well, from memory, I think uh, one of the sailing uh, cups, the Sir Thomas Lipton Trophy, was held in the 1830s with, with incredible sailing yachts. So it's actually a lot of history and has been happening a long time. Um, what we have now is this incredible modern Tiger City, which is very fast paced, and I guess, depending on what job you do, can be a bit stressful. And I, I think 
a most fantastic way to uh, get over that is to have a boat and go out on the water. And I know when I do that, I, I certainly de-stress. You can get away from the city. We've got 20 odd islands in the south of the country, places to drop the anchor. We've got a beautiful beach to go and have a swim. So for weekend boating, it's, it's quite phenomenal and very enjoyable. And of course, it's 365 days a year. We do have a bit of rain, but it tends not to rain all day. So there's always nice gaps. Uh, beyond that, it's superbly located. Um, directly across the water, we have the Riau Islands. There are 4,000 islands just seven miles away from Singapore. Um, and we're developing relationships, as you know, with those islands uh, to um, enable uh, more boating uh, between the two groups. Beyond that, we have Malaysia uh, on the doorstep with the Tioman Island group, uh, the Pahentian Islands further north than that. Uh, and of course, we have here Phuket, just uh, 600 nautical miles away. So it's a pretty stunning base to have a yacht. You can have a very small one and stay local, or you can have a much bigger one and do both the local cruising and go much further. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, a unique place, and with a first class city, of course, behind it, with the entertainment scene, provisions, everything you need for your boat, um, I think that's why we've seen fantastic growth along with some visionaries of um, growing new marinas and, and facilities. What's on your wish list for 2011? I, I think um, collaboration, it's a word I've been using consistently throughout the, 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 the conference because we're all more uh, powerful, more successful and uh, uh, have a great time and our customers have a great time if we collaborate more. And it's amazing, a couple of years ago, many of us didn't even know each other in Singapore before the formation of the SSA. So that collaboration now needs to extend uh, to New Zealand, to Australia, to the Pacific Islands, to China, the whole of Asia, and people are knitting and working together. Uh, and it creates a real fantastic, enjoyable family, particularly in the, in the super yacht business. And we know we can call upon each other for help and experience because nobody knows it all. Everybody needs help and, uh, and, and, and technical knowledge. And we know that resource is there now, the more we work together. Across Asia, as Northrop and Johnson, we'd love to sell uh, three or four 80-foot plus yachts uh, this year. We do have a, an inquiry for a 130-metre super yacht right now. I don't know how real it is yet, but we're working on it. Um, that would be a wonderful way to, uh, um, to end the year, if not start it. <laughs>